Okay, so let's finish talking about this issue of time travel. So most movies and stories about time travel actually present things that are, I think, logically impossible. They seem consistent, but when you really think about it, they're not. Um, some examples of this, I think a good one, you know, the Back to the Future movies, you know. Marty almost accidentally erases himself from the past by making his parents not meet, or, you know, Marty changes the past so his dad's way cooler. That, that's just not possible, right? Logically, you know, intentionally changing the past is impossible. Logically, you couldn't even unintentionally change the past in a way that would result in you not existing, right? So, not possible to change the past. Good reasons to think that. So, time travel as we often think of it, you know, movies Back to the Future, um, you know, Looper, things like that where people change the past, that's just not possible. But time travel, at least in a form, does seem to be logically coherent, logically possible. You can imagine stories without logical contradictions where people either time travel or they get and or they get information from the future. Some examples in movies, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, I hope I'm saying that right, 12 Monkeys, um, another movie is Arrival, TV, Lovecraft Country, the Watchmen series that was recently on, those all have consistent versions of time travel, right? Where people don't change the past. Short stories, The Alchemist's Gate um, by Ted Chiang, The Story of Your Life, also by Ted Chiang. The Alchemist's Gate's really good. Um, I thought about giving you guys that. It illustrates kind of the same themes of the story I did give you guys. It's also like, I think, over 30 pages, so it just seemed a little long. Um, a more, a lesser science fiction story that I think a lot of times, you know, you saw in high school, um, reading books, who's cribbing. That one's entertaining, I don't know. 14-year-old me thought it was super clever. I don't want to go back and find out if 14-year-old me was right. Um, Alan Moore, the comic book writer, he loves closed causal loops in time travel. He has a bunch of these in his Supreme comic book. Um, his Watchmen comic book also has a character who can see into the future. Again, you know, you get this consistent time travel and he doesn't try to change it. The Watchmen TV series was kind of based on Moore's comics. They also follow with that. That one's the one I most uh, remember best right off the bat. There's another causal loop in that one. There's a moment where one character somehow knows that, you know, another character is a Klansman and kills him. And, you know, later on, this one character who can travel through time asks a future version of the guy who killed this Klansman. He's like, how did you know he was a Klansman? He's like, oh, he's a Klansman? So close causal loop. He kills him for being a Klansman, so this character who can travel through time knows the guy's a Klansman, and he accidentally tells the guy in the past, this guy is a, you know, a Klansman, so that's how the guy knows. It's clever, but again, it's weird, right? Another close causal loop, some more bootstrapping, right? Um, but logically coherent time travel nonetheless sets up some really weird things. So for one thing, to maintain logical consistency, it somehow needs to be the case that you can't change the past. You definitely can't make intentional change. But again, if the intentional change is something that's very easy to do and time travel is possible, why is that? Is there just some kind of weird thing that maintains the past well but again that seems weird right there's no logical contradiction in bootstrapping these closed causal loops where you know 
future you gives past you the time machine plans or you know future whoever goes in the past with Beethoven symphonies and publishes them so that's how Beethoven symphonies came to be but it's really weird right it allows things to just exist for no reason and very complicated things like symphonies and time machines that definitely seem to stand in need of explanation. So the fact that backwards causation sets up this weird stuff is reason to think it can't happen. The fact that to maintain consistency you need this weird force is I think another reason to think that time travel can't happen. But why not? I think one natural explanation is just to say the future is different from the past. The past exists in a way that the future does not. But I'll admit, this is all really murky. It's hard to know, you know, what is proof for what, what is going on here. But at the very least, even if we don't get super clear answers, I hope you guys find this interesting and can see how it does speak to the questions about free will. Personally, I don't think time travel from the future is possible because I tend to think, I go with this Aristotelian view, the future doesn't exist in the way the past and present does. But I'll admit that's not an entirely satisfying view. There is some sense, I think, where we would like the future to exist. It's reassuring, just on an emotional level. But on another level, when you look at it another way, it's kind of terrifying. I, I don't know. Emotional needs don't dictate truth, but I think they do explain a lot of our beliefs. So on the emotional level, I can see both why the thought that the future exists in the same way the past does, why it's reassuring, but also why it's terrifying. Anyway, that draws to an end the stuff I want to say about the nature of time. I do want to say some more stuff about free will and responsibility that comes at this from another angle, though. So next time we'll get into that, this issue of moral luck. After that, we will talk about Sartre's ideas on radical freedom or the unavoidability of taking yourself to be free.